joined now by the London MP George Galloway, who yesterday reminded us that he argued that the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq would increase the threat of a terrorist attack in Britain. Tragically, he went on, Londoners have now paid the price of the government ignoring such warnings. That was a pretty crass thing to say, though, wasn't it, when bodies are still not even buried or identified? Well, actually, the political note was set by the Prime Minister and the President of the United States within moments of the explosions, hours before I made my speech in the Commons. They argued that these events were a vindication of their so-called war on terror and a justification for continuing down the path that they're on. And no one can allow that because it's precisely that path, it's precisely those policies that have led us to this. But don't, don't you think you owe it to the relatives of the bereaved to be more sensitive at this time than to tell them that they paid a price for a policy because it sounds as if you were playing the politics of the last atrocity. No, no, it was Mr. Bush and Mr. Blair who spoke first who were as the leaders the of their countries. Playing the politics of the last atrocity, seeking to use these poor dead people, most of whom I'm sure opposed these wars just as much as I did, because most people in London did in overwhelming numbers. But you were saying I told you, you, saying I told you so, no, weren't you? No, no, because I'm trying to stop the next attack. I'm sto sure, trying to stop the next that. disaster. Everybody wants yes, that, Mr. so Gunn. let's but have you, a discussion. We will then do. then we let's, will do. let's not recriminate. Let's talk about how we can sure, stop the next But you caused attack. great offence to No, I didn't. Well, actually, well, actually... Poisonous mo tongue and a pool of blood, according well, to the Armed Forces Minister. From the Armed Forces Minister. Well, I don't think we need to say much more about that. He would say that wouldn't he, as, uh, as uh, a, a famous uh, harlot once said. The reality is that if we continue with the current policy, there are going to be more tragedies such would as you, this. Would you negotiate with these people? Not with them. There's no negotiating with them because they don't have a program that can be negotiated with. What we need to do is dry up the swamp out of which they're feeding, breeding and growing. We need to address the issues that provide a base for them in the world where sure. millions of people support them, some of them actively. That's a fact. You look surprised. No, I don't it, look surprised. Millions... Ever, ever, you, you're saying something which everybody agrees with. We want well, fewer terrorists. Well, we ha Absolutely. But the but, question but, is, how do you go about that? Do you, but, do you but, engage with them? No, no, no you don't. There's, there's, there's no nothing point. on God's earth there's, that they want, is there? There's no point in talking to them. Right. But if so you address the issues, no, of course lock them up, shoot them, do, let's do what we can to stop them in any way. I'm for that. But unless we address the causes which are providing the recruits for them, the disaster in Palestine, the road map that's drenched in blood and going nowhere, the occupation of Iraq, the propping up of tyrants in the Muslim world. Unless we ad drop the, ad ad address these issues, they'll get, there'll you, be 10,000 new bin Do you ladders. really think that the people who blew up commuters in a London tube were thinking about any of these things? No. I'm telling you, these people cannot be negotiated with. No, but, but they were recruited the from pool, somewhere, look, weren't they? Look, the fish needs water in which to swim. It needs recruits. It needs supporters. But there are plenty uh, of people who think that there's something wrong in Palestine or plenty of people who oppose the Iraq war or Afghanistan who don't do anything like no, this No, no, but whatsoever. enough. But look, the Tora Bora once held a few hundred Al-Qaeda members. Now there are probably thousands of Al-Qaeda supporters around the world actively seeking to hurt us. Now how do we dry that up is the question. How do we drain that swamp? of hatred and bitterness against us that's feeding these people and making them right. more powerful. And, and I'm sure, sure everybody does agree with that, but do you not owe it to your constituents to speak more carefully about well, this subject when you, when you know that Muslim leaders well, are saying do well, exactly that? Be don't you careful. lecture me about my constituents. I'm answerable to them. I wasn't and lecturing I, you. I'm well, asking you, do well, you or I, not owe it at a time when Muslim listen, leaders are I've suggesting been walking you around, keep very calm I've about this? I've been walking around should, my constituency. Be very careful about please, your language. Please, I've been walking around my constituency all day, and do you know what? Everybody agrees with me. And if you didn't live in this bubble inside Everybody the Everybody in your constituency agrees with yes, George Galloway. Yes, everyone that I met today, every single one, and I met hundreds and hundreds today. And if you didn't live inside this bubble inside the Beltway, well, you'd know the that most of the East London Mosque country... doesn't live in this bubble, and he wants people to be very careful about Do you about think the, the Imam of the East use? London Mosque doesn't agree with me? He wants people to be very careful listen, about the language listen, that they use. Listen, most people in this country, outside this bubble, know that what I'm saying is right. And the overwhelming number of people around the world know that what I'm saying is right. It's only because you persist in parroting government orthodoxies, which you've been doing for some years. I've been watching you. It's well, because, I'm, it's I'm because it's people hurt innocent people, then the people who did it are to blame. But you can't separate it from the backdrop of which it forms a part. That's the thesis that differentiates us 
from the uh, platitudes of Mr. Blair, who wants to be tough on terror but ignore the causes of terror. So Tony Blair has brought destruction to London? Well, the people who brought destruction to London were primarily the people who committed the acts of mass murder. All we say is we refuse to be part of a conspiracy to deny that it has anything to do with the fact that our country is going around the world setting fire to other people's countries and killing them. I think there's hardly a sentient being in the land left who doesn't believe that these things are connected, although when I said it in the House of Commons just four weeks ago, the sky fell in on me, including on the Today programme. Well, you say that the fault lies with those who carried out the attack, so you're condemning the suicide bombs in London? Well, I'm almost insulted by that question. I have condemned it utterly in the most vitriolic terms on every occasion I've spoken, which is every day, and including on the day in the House of Commons. I, I, in a way, I, I'm bound to say, how dare you ask me that question? The sort of, uh, well, the, the reason I ask it is because the kind of language that you've employed in this series of interviews for television stations in Middle East could, I'm sure you, you will agree, be seized upon by certain people as a justification for what no. they plan to do. Madam, if I say a car has four wheels, and the Ford Motor Company say it has four wheels, that doesn't make me a part of the Ford Motor Company. I am telling you the truth as I see it. It was my duty to do so. I did it in the House of Commons on the day of the bombing. The entire media and political class fell on top of my head. I was insulted on Newsnight by, uh, by your uh, Gavin Esler, uh, who said I was crass. And within 10 days, 85% of the people in the opinion polls agreed with me. So, please, don't misrepresent what I'm saying. I'm utterly against the punishing of innocent people for the crimes of the guilty, whether it's done on the underground in London or on the streets of Fallujah by George Bush's Air Force. When you said on your Middle East television interview that the insurgents are martyrs, what did you mean? Well, I didn't say the insurgents are martyrs, and you're drawing from a... Well, the Iraqi resistance in Iraq are martyrs, you said. Well, a martyr by definition is dead. The Iraqi resistance are very much alive, and the problem is they're making a lot of other people dead. And I want to stop the killing. I want to withdraw our soldiers and the United States soldiers from a disastrous war based on a tower of lies which any sentient person can already see was a huge blunder. It seems that in the last redoubts of the BBC and in Downing Street, there's an unwillingness to accept that. But I can tell you, as someone who lives their life in democratic politics amongst the people of this country, it's you who's isolated, not me. You have said that two of your beautiful daughters are in the hands of foreigners, Jerusalem and Baghdad. The foreigners are doing to your daughters as they will. Some Arab countries are collaborating with the rape of those two beautiful Arab daughters. Why did you choose to use such inflammatory language? Language which, according to your critics, people like Eric Joyce, put the lives of British soldiers at risk. Well, I don't think there are any British soldiers occupying Jerusalem, or Baghdad uh, for that matter. But I believe the foreign occupations of Jerusalem and Baghdad are at the heart of the crisis between the Muslim world and the non-Muslim world, the East and the West. And I believe we have to address that. And if we don't, we're doomed to be locked into a cycle of violence. Our violence to them, their violence to us. I want to break that cycle. I believe that Baghdad is illicitly, illegally, violently occupied by the United States. I believe that Jerusalem is illegally, violently occupied by General Sharon. I'm not alone in that view. You're not alone in your view about uh, wanting to end British troops' position in Iraq, indeed. There are other politicians who've argued against the war in the same way. Not in the language that you've employed. You talk of Arab countries collaborating with the rape of two beautiful Arab daughters, Jerusalem and Baghdad. Well, I with language to... like that, Let me just finish. With la language like that, are you prepared to take responsibility for fanning the flames of an already dangerous situation, fueling disaffection, for example, among British Muslim youth, who will then say, well, here's our justification for staging suicide bombings, for, for going to Al-Qaeda training camps. Don't you dare try and place responsibility for that on me. I'm the person who, if I, I had been listened to, we wouldn't be in this mess. We wouldn't be in Iraq if 
the BBC and the British government had listened to the millions of British people marching against the war. We are the people who told you, if you attack Iraq in this way, you'll make 10,000 new bin Ladens. We are the people who beseeched you to stop peddling your propaganda lies about the need for this war. But you see, this comes back to the argument... It's me who should be accusing you, not you who's accusing me. This comes back to the argument, though, that we weren't in Iraq when 9-11 happened, when Bali was bombed. Over the past 12 years, Al-Qaeda have attacked 26 countries. It's not just Iraq. Well, I, I know that argument. I heard it the first time employed by Mr. Blair, and you've, uh, you've succinctly uh, restated his position. But it's true. But isn't it's it? not true. The Al-Qaeda phenomenon arose out of the first war on Iraq arose out of the occupation of Jerusalem and the killing of the Palestinians and the dispersal of the refugees around the world, arose out of our support for the puppet presidents and corrupt kings of the Muslim world. That's how the Al-Qaeda phenomenon arose. Now, I don't know if Osama bin Laden would stop attacking us if we stopped doing what we're doing in the Muslim world, but I tell you this, I know that a fish needs water in which to swim, and if we did what I'm suggesting that we do, we would dry up the swamp in which Al-Qaeda and these other obscurantists, these medieval obscurantists, want to swim. I'm not wanting to negotiate with bin Laden, but with those who haven't joined him yet. Was it wise to say, as you said, it's not the Muslims who are the terrorists, the biggest terrorists are Bush and Blair? But that's my view. I was elected on that view. I have a mandate for that view. You may not like that view, but it is my view that the biggest terrorist in the world is George W. Bush. Now, I have to You're tell you... You're surely not saying you that Bush and know. Blair are more terrorists than those who blew up London Do on you, the 7th Have of you July. any idea how many innocent people George Bush and Tony Blair have killed over the last three and a half years? Have you any idea how many people they killed in Afghanistan? How many people they've killed in Iraq? How many people their weapons have killed in Palestine? What about if the numbers of innocent any, civilians, the did, children that have been killed if, by the insurgents in if Iraq? If you did have any idea, you wouldn't even ask me that question. If it's a question of quantum, there's far more blood on the hands of George Bush and Tony Blair than there is on the hands of the murderers who killed those people in London. If it's a question of quantum, there is no question.